Nice work, Jack. Not bad. I guess I better be leaving. I'm on park duty this afternoon. I still got to change into my uniform. I'll see you later. Okay. What do you think of today's bulletin? Have you read it? And some news in it should be of a special interest to you. I haven't had time yet, but I will before I go on duty. This is one report you should read before you go to work. Sounds kind of important. Oh, not exactly important, but it is interesting. Should be particularly to you. Means you'll probably be pounding the pavements again. Say, that is interesting. Give me that. Yeah, I'll read it to you. Go ahead, you're late now. Get dressed. To all mounted officers in the traffic division. At a meeting held today in the city council at the suggestion of Commissioner of Police, the Honorable Mr. Hanson, amendments were offered and passed to the effect that all officers in the traffic division, now using horses in their line of duty, shall report to their superior officers at the close of this day and receive further instructions as to their assignments. It being moved and seconded that all horses now being used in the traffic department be retired from service and sold at public auction to the highest bidders. Shall we play hearts and flowers for you? Well, what do a bunch of councilmen or commissioners know about the need of horses in the traffic division? Well, I'll bet my bottom dollar they've never been near a horse or really investigated the work the horses do, particularly in the park division. It's rotten, I tell you. What's rotten, Jack? Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner, but that's the way I feel about it. About what? about the discontinuance of horses in the police department. Well, I fail to see where you can find anything rotten about that. It's the right thing to do, and now is the time to do it. The horses have meant a great deal to the department, Mr. Hanson, and they've proven their worth a dozen different ways, and now you're throwing them out. My boy, I'm surprised at you taking that attitude. Most of the horses are growing old, and it would be foolhardy to replace them. Besides, traffic conditions are getting heavier every day. We must meet new problems, in new ways. But Starlight isn't old. He's doing his job and doing it well. Well, the ruling's been passed and you'll have to make the best of it. They'll probably be assigning you to the motorcycle squad. Not me. As far as I'm concerned, if they take Starlight away from me, they can give me a pair of roller skates. Why, well, I'd be just as helpless with them as I would be without Starlight. Forget it, my boy. You're taking matters too seriously. In a couple of months, you'll forget that you ever rode a horse by the name of Starlight. That's where you're wrong, Mr. Hanson. And don't be surprised if you find my resignation in tonight. Oh, don't be foolish, Jack. You couldn't quit the force. Oh, yes, I could. Well, don't be hasty. for me. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. Well, don't thank me. Thank Starlight. His speed really saved your life. You know, if that horse of yours ever hit that traffic lane, it might have been just too bad for you. Just too bad is right, and it'll be worse if I don't get myself out of the arms of the law. Oh, I'm sorry. He certainly is a beautiful animal. What did you say his name is? Well, what did you say your name is? Oh, I'm Ellen Hanson. Hanson? Any relation to the police commissioner? Only his daughter. Starlight, thank the lady for the privilege. Say, you're certainly fortunate to own such an animal. I wish he were mine, but he belongs to the city. I'm losing him tonight. Well, what do you mean? Well, uh, orders have been issued retiring all horses from service. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, they have, and Starlight has just performed his last official act. I'm sorry.
Well, where'd you get the cigar? I wanted a raffle. Only cost me two bucks. <laughs> oh, you're no fool. Uh, you bet. <laughs> what do you think of that? Oh, boy, they got me. Imagine, after all the personal attention I've given them beasts, now they're going to fire them. That means I'm out of a job. Well, you've got nothing on the horses, Jaime. They're all going to be out of jobs, too. Yeah, but that's what's hoist. They've only been used to working with us coppers. Did you say us coppers? Well, you know what I mean, pal. I'd have been one myself, only I've been too busy working the horses. I didn't get a chance to take my third degree. Well, you'll have plenty of time now. Sure, and you're going to help me, ain't you? I will, Jaime, but not for some time. You ain't quitting, are you? Well, uh, you can call it that. Just resigning. You mean they fired you? No, they fired Starlight. Things wouldn't be the same around here without him. You ain't getting sentimental over a horse, are you? I must be, Jaime. Yeah, but we got to be progressive. That's what the chief said. Horses is a thing of the past. He said that, too. You know, time marches on. You bet it does, and I'm marching, too. But I'm sticking with horses. Starlet has proven a good friend, and I'm going to the commissioner and try to buy him. Yeah, well, I heard that they were going to sell them all. Say, somebody made a crack about making glue out of them bang tails. They were just kidding, wasn't they? Well, not entirely. Yeah, but they can't do that to me. I've been practically a mother to them nags. You better forget your motherly instincts and get yourself another job. However, if you don't find a spot, you know where my place is on the desert. <laughs> you bet, boss. And I'll be seeing you sooner than you expect. Any time. I want you to know that I appreciate your efforts this afternoon in saving my daughter Ellen from what might have been a very serious accident. Well, there wasn't much to it, but it did confirm what we were talking about this afternoon about the value of horses in the traffic department. You may be right in this case, but accidents like that don't happen every day. Well, this one certainly struck close to home. Can you imagine my embarrassment riding a motorcycle trying to catch a runaway horse? And speaking of horses, that's the main reason I'm here. I want to buy Starlight, now that the traffic department has no more use for him. I'm sorry, Jack, but I can't sell him to you. Well, I'll pay you your price. I'll give you more than anyone else will offer. I know that. And I hate to let you down like this. If it were in my power, I'd give you the horse. But you'll be able to buy him later at the public sale. It's quite a disappointment not being able to buy Starlight now. Well, according to law, Jack, we must auction all the horses. I'm sorry I can't sell him to you now. But you won't have any trouble buying him at the auction. I hope not. Ladies and gentlemen, bids are now in order. We offer first... Hey, mister, couldn't you hold this off till my pal gets here? I'm sorry, my friend, but we must start promptly. This is an auction, and I'm not permitted to wait for anyone. It's the law. The law or no laws? There's going to be some laws busted if my pal doesn't get starlight. They can't do that to me. Bitch a sweet life. They can't do that to me. If you, my illustrious friend and colleague, would kindly condescend to cease your mumbling and bring forth a brown equine quadruped, we will proceed with this auction. Wise guy, huh? The horse, my friend. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Which one do you want, pal? My name, sir, is Hugo Boniface Mortimer Khan. And now you may bring me the chestnut sturgeon. Which one do you want? <laughs> my error. I mean, uh, stallion. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my mind was wandering back into the long, long ago when we made excursions into the ocean vastness in search of the elusive piscatorial denizens of the deep. Now, this fine, gentle horse, the prize of the fire uh, police department, how much am I bid for him? A beautiful animal. Hey, mister, you're playing with fire. There you are. I told you so.
Now, ladies and gentlemen, how much am I bid for this mayor here? How much am I bid? Ten dollars. Ten dollars the gentleman bids over here. Ten dollars. Do I hear any more? Twenty-five. Twenty-five dollars. Do I hear thirty? What business are you in, brother? Oh, I'm I'm the agent for the ex nay Glue Company. Oh, Glue Company, huh? I bid fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Do I hear any more bid? Ah, uh, no horse is worth fifty dollars to us. That's all right with me. Sold to this gentleman for fifty dollars. Fifty-one dollars. Glue factory. Glue factory. <laughs> you get fresh with me, I'll put that glue factory on the bum. Ordered, weren't you? Well, I guess I was, but I was in a hurry to get to an auction to buy a horse. Buy a horse? Yeah. <laughs> I've heard a lot of excuses, but never that one before. Where's your driver's license? I guess I haven't got it. You haven't got it. You haven't a license for your trailer, you haven't your operator's license. Sing me a song and dance about buying a horse. I better take you in. Oh, wait a minute. See, I was on the force for years. Park Division. Rank is the name. I was pistol champion last year. Here, maybe this will help. Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Where'd you say you were going? Police auction at headquarters. Well, let's go. I'm bid $110 for this fine horse. The pride of the traffic department. $110. Do I hear any more bid? Going at $110. Going. Going. Ha, and 10 cents. $110. Do I hear any more bids? Look at that horse, ladies and gentlemen. Do I hear $120 for this fine horse? $120. $120. Going at $120. Sold to the young lady for $120. Betty, you wouldn't like that horse. He bites. Jack got us down, pal. If he'd have been here, we'd have sure had starlight. What happened? Is it all over? I'll say it's all over. We lost starlight. And to a dame, too. That's what boys me. Dames don't know nothing about horses. What kept you, anyway? Oh, I had a little trouble getting here. Where is he now? <laughs> I failed you, old boy, when you needed me most. I hope your new owner thinks as much of you as I do. Well, why shouldn't she? He saved her life, didn't he? So you're the one who bought him. Uh-huh. Don't you think I had reason enough? I think he's grand. So do I. I figured on buying him myself, but I was delayed in getting here. Oh, now I'm beginning to understand why that gentleman was so anxious. I thought he'd bite my head off. Jaime? Don't pay any attention to him. He's harmless. You know, by letting Starlight get out of my possession, I feel as though I let my best friend down. I can appreciate how you feel. You did me a favor once. I could do one for you now. You mean you'd sell him to me? No, not sell him, but give him to you. Oh, I couldn't take him. But I would like to buy him from you. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, it's a deal. 
Gee, that's swell. Say, he's a beauty. Look here. You have the horse. Don't steal my dog. <laughs> Take him. Call an ambulance. They got Butch. Let's get out of here. Uh, hello, Mrs. Jack. I'm sorry I didn't get over sooner. But thank you for getting me this. Job. Well, that's all right, Snowflake. I know you'd be saying that, Mr. Jack. My job is finished now. now. Nothing like that. You can have your job as long as you want. If you do the right thing. I hope they don't make no complaints about the way I handle this. I did my best. Sure you did. You're going to get a big reward. I don't think I'm getting no reward. Oh, yes, you will. I met Jaime yesterday. He said that you was quitting the force, going back to the desert, taking starlight with you. I kind of figured on trailing along. That is, if you would let me. You bet I will. Now, just take it easy. You was my best friend, Mr. Jack. I sure feel bad that I have to leave you. Oh, uh, Rankin. Sorry about Snowflake. He was a nice boy. We're going to miss him. Yes, I've known the boy for a long time. I felt kind of responsible for him. I shouldn't have ever got him that job in the bank. Well, the boy did his duty. And he's a credit to his people. Well, others were better prepared to protect the bank than Snowflake. He was only the porter. I know. But the boy showed courage. And he did what he thought was the only thing for him to do when he saw the property of his employers endangered. It's going to be difficult for me to tell his folks. You'll find a way. And incidentally, find your way up to my office in the morning. I want to have a talk with you. Yes, sir. Hey, where are we going now? Say, the most important thing to do now is to find a spot to lay low in. I'm taking you there now. It's a spot out on the edge of the desert. It belongs to my brother. He won't be there this time of the year, and nobody will ever know we're there. Yeah, you're getting smart, kid. It's about time you found it out, right? Uh, keep going. That was nice work, Rankin. We'd like to have you stay on the force. There's a nice promotion up for you if you'll come back. Well, thanks, Mr. Hanson. But I've made up my mind. I have a nice place I've homesteaded down in the desert. I'm leaving right away with Starlight. It'll be necessary for you to sign a deposition on the capture of Butch. Where can I reach you by phone? Well, I'm sorry. Where I'm going, you can't. Well, in that event, leave your address here, and we'll see that the papers get to you. I'll deliver those papers in person. Is that a promise? It is. I'd like to see how Starlight looks on the desert. Did you say Starlight? Sheriff Brooks. Hello, Jack. What are you doing here this time of year? I'm up to stay this time. Why, you mean you're quitting the force? That's just it. Say, Jack, this is no time to be quitting. I figured you as a fixture up there. That was it. I was becoming just that. But I bought Starlight, 
Well, I'm going up to the shack and park out a while. Oh, I'll be seeing you around. Not too soon. I'm stocking up on a couple of months' supplies. But I'll see you later. Okay. spot you picked for us, kid. Makes a good hideout. But that's all it's good for. Yeah, I often wonder what my brother saw in staking himself out to a joint like this. Now, what I like about the place, it's off the main road. There's not a chance of anyone ever finding us here. Listen, if we had to get out of here in a hurry, we cut across the desert, up the valley, and over the dam. Once we get to the dam, the country's ours. These backwoodsmen don't know the war's over. Hey, Rod, you're apt to find wearing that bulletproof vest under your shirt for underwear kind of warm out here in the desert. <laughs> oh, yeah. I might find it warmer if I took it off. Yeah, or colder. Very quaint sense of humor. Not half as quaint a sense of humor as the government. Imagine them sending me an income tax report to make out. That's what you get for leaving your address around. You should have changed it. Well, I lived there for 10 years. He couldn't change it. Not without knocking the walls down. <laughs> well, address or no address, they ain't getting any of my dough. Don't worry about that. They'll get it or get you. Well, I'd give my share of the dough to get Butch out of the spot that he's in. Butch was a right guy, but always too slow on the getaway. He'd have made it easy if some wise guy hadn't taken a chance. That porter had a lot of nerve taken after us. Yeah, he had a lot of nerve. And the way I saw Butch blaze away at him, he won't be using it anymore. Butch is a cinch to burn. Got a record a mile long. Bumping off that porter ain't gonna help him any. Oh, let's quit talking about him. Let's think about us. How about splitting up the dough? Keep your shirt on, kid. You'll get yours. We've been giving you the breaks, haven't we? Sure. If it hadn't have been for us, you'd still be out at that reform school. Yeah, it was nice of you fellas to help me break away. But I've been helping you plenty, too. We're partners, ain't we? So forget it. And start doing some figuring on how we can spring Butch. Say, I think I got a slant for you. I could get my brother. Maybe he'd help if I told him Butch was a friend of mine. Your brother? I didn't know you had one. Oh, yeah, sure I do. I remember now you saying something about this being his place. What does he do? Who does he know? Oh, he's a... Oh, oh, he knows a lot of politicians around town. Might help us to get the right lawyers. Spring Butch. You're getting smarter by the hour, kid. You ought to be starting back to the city and make some contacts for us. Wait a minute. On second thought, I can't do that. My brother wouldn't help me. Anyhow, he wouldn't be a party to the things we're thinking of. Say... Anybody would be a party to anything if there's enough dough in it. That might go for a lot of people, but you don't know my brother. I don't want to know him unless he can do me some good. Get your coat on and head for town. See what you can do. We'll give you all that dough you need. The town's too hot. I can't go now. The kid's right. Let's lay low till things cools off a little. This hitchhike ain't what it used to be.
Gee whiz. It's my brother. I thought you said he'd never come up here this time of year. Never has before. Well, if he knows anything, this will be the shortest vacation he ever spent. Say, what does your brother do? Oh, um, he's in the horse business. Great lover of horses. All my family's been that way, all but me. Well, if he acts regular, we let him alone. You better go outside and meet him first. Tell him we're friends of yours. Okay, I'll meet him outside. He spots anyone here, sees the cars, have to get suspicious. Go ahead. And don't forget, we're watching you. Not have to forget. Hey, put on your coats and cover up those playthings. Oh, yeah. What are you doing out here? I thought you were... Get up your grips and keep walking with me. I gotta talk fast. What do you mean? I'm in trouble. They're watching inside. Yeah. Listen, I broke out of reform school and got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Drove a car and a stick up. We're using your place for a hideout. I told them you're my brother, but they don't know you're a copper. Watch yourself for a couple of days and don't slip away and they won't be suspicious. Well, how have you been anyway, kid? Oh, swell, Jack. <laughs> Fellas, this is my brother, Jack. Glad to know you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's uh, quite a surprise to find company here. But as long as you're friends of my brother here, why, just make yourself at home. Thanks. My good children is the promised land. Oh, I know it's a little dry, but Jaime will fix it up. Brother was telling me you're in the horse business. Horse business? Oh, yeah. Uh, horse business. You know, I used to be pretty close to that racket myself. I followed them for years. Well, I never went in for racing. Just sort of been around them, you know. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to own a nice string of horses and spend all my time at the track. Well, there's better spots you could be spending your time. Meaning what? Oh, my brother means like, uh, reading good books or traveling. Or living in a joint like this. Well, this may be a joint to you fellas, but it's home to me. I like this. I wish I could spend all my time here. Say, being as we're friends of your brother, and you look like a right guy to me, I might let you in on a nice little piece of business that'd make that possible. Dave was telling me you know a lot of big shots. Well, I know several, and they might be just the right people. What's on your mind? That's Jaime. He's a friend of mine. I think we're crowding you here. We'll take a walk for a while. Maybe you got something private to tell him. Oh, no, nothing like that. I didn't expect to find company here, so I told Jaime to drop in any time he wanted to. And he sure brought along plenty of company. Well, uh, you see, uh, horses are Jaime's weakness. Jaime! Surprised you, didn't I? I'll tell you, did. What brought you down here? Well, you said I was always welcome. Well, how'd you get here? How'd I get here? You ask me how I got here. I brought the horses, so naturally I walked. 
and my feet are killing me. With a string of horses? Well, why didn't you ride one? <laughs> Never occurred to me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'm a promotion just ahead of you. Maybe to be in a captain under force, you prefer to live in a spot like this. Why the way you nabbed that guy, but you could have wrote your own ticket. Are you going nuts? And just when you're going to have power in your hand. When they send that deposition to you, it's up to you whether or not Butch Boynes. And that's real power. Just like a judge, you've got a human life in your hands. You know, I was thinking, they'll be sending that deposition up here any day now. Stay where you are. Thanks. My feet are killing me. And So, your brother's a dealer in horses, huh? Maybe you don't know it, but Butch is our pal. We're the guys that stuck up the bank. And that this little brother of yours, that dirty double-crossing rat. Stay down. This is an outrage. Stay down. Come on, lay off, Dave. I didn't know what your record was until you just told me. Well, you know what it is now. You're going to be a lot of help to me. When them papers arrive, you're going to write just what I say. And then if Butch goes free, you go free. Maybe. I don't like the way he said that. Could we have a few minutes alone? Shut up! Who, me? Yes, you, Jaime. The least said, the better. I got my rights. Free speech, that's me. I'm going to write to the governor about this. If you don't pipe down, you'll lose your speech. I resent that. Well, resent this. Boy, that was some earthquake. Oh. It's just above the heart. You gotta let me get a doctor. <laughs> a doctor? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I could make it easy on you and finish him off now. Mm. Jaime, get me some water quick. Sit down, stupid. I resent that insult. So you're resenting again. You might as well make up your mind you're staying here for a while. So take it easy and don't try anything funny. You gotta get away, Jay. They'll kill you, sure. Just as soon as they make you write what they want on the deposition for Butch. I'm gonna get out of here and darn quick. I'm riding for a doctor. Don't do it, Jay. Don't do it, it's no use. If you make a break, stay away. Starlight. Starlight's tied off around the side of the house. I got you into this. I thought I might help you get out of it. You'll be all right. Oh. If you let me get a doctor, I'll do anything you say. I give you my word. Your word. <laughs> what good's that to me? Well, there's a first aid kit out in my car. Will you let me get it? Well, the kid's in bad shape. If I don't clean out that wound, he won't last long. What do I care how long he lasts? It'll do him good to go out the hard way. He won't be causing you any more trouble. So calm yourself, because I ain't letting you out. Do you think I'm that crazy? That I let you get outside, make a break for help, and have the whole countryside up here after us? Nothing doing. Oh, let him get it. I saw it when I was searching the car. Nothing else there. All right, get it. But remember, I'm keeping you covered every inch of the way.
It's up to you, Starlight. Get to town. Trying to pull a fast one, huh? No, I just wanted to get a doctor. The stuff I had in the car couldn't help him any. Yeah, you're becoming a nuisance. If I didn't think you was going to help me get Butch out, I'd have finished you. But I think I can persuade you to say the right thing in those depositions. Maybe. You can't do this to me. No. Yeah, what do you think I am? A lion in a gilded cage? Oh, sit down. All right. I'll sit down. But it's against my will. How is he? You won't need no doctor. Say, what happened to that horse? Oh, he ran away after I caught Rankin. Ran away? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Say, don't you know what that means in this country? A riderless horse running into town? No. Why, that's the law of the desert. There'll be a posse up here after us in no time. Say, we'd better be getting out of here. I'll say we'd better be getting out of here. Yeah. But not until I take care of a couple of ex-coppers. This. His burning is going to be a pleasure compared to what's going to happen to you. You don't think you're going to get away with this, do you? What's going to stop me? I'll tell you what's going to stop you. The law of payoffs. Desert justice, they call it. Well, there's your finish. <laughs> don't be too sure. I read a book on escapes once. Hey, where's the rest of the horses? Well, they're gone. Oh, we both have to ride this one. Come you on. get on first.
I'd like to know the direction those killers took. As I came up, I saw two men on a horse headed out over that desert. Well, that was them, all right. I've got to stop them before they get to the country behind the dam, or we'll never catch them. Yeah, well, I'm going with you. Not this time, honey. You've got to drive Miss Hanson back to town. And if Starlight got to town, you'll be meeting the sheriff on the way out, turning back through Rainbow Trail. And if he gets the brakes, they'll beat us to the head of the canyon and stop those fellows. I'm heading over the desert. But you can't go alone and on foot. Well, they've taken the only remaining horse. You wouldn't get a hundred yards trying to drive a car through. That's why we use horses. Hey, there's stuff going on the horse. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking. What you expect us to do, carry him? Yeah, that's one way, and here's another. Oh. in back of the dam. Jack wants you to take the rainbow trail and try and head them off. Okay, miss. All right, boys, let's go.